cervical cancer is the most preventable of all cancers and still 75,000 women die of it every year in India and it is a real tragedy why women should die of a disease which can be easily prevented by screening. Due to financial constraints and lack of infrastructural facilities and trained manpower, India cannot think of organized uh, cancer screening program utilizing pap smear. A vaccine may be a more simple approach to prevention of cervical cancer, particularly, of course, if it can be made available at low cost for developing countries. Charlotte Pereira has cervical cancer. She's one of nearly half a million women in the developing world who get the disease every year. Most cases go undiagnosed until it's too late. Charlotte is lucky. Her cancer was found early and it's treatable. I had a pain in the right side of my abdomen and I went to a doctor who said I had a swelling in my uterus. So I was asked to come for a surgery and after surgery they found out I had cancer. Cervical cancer is preventable, but lack of screening in developing countries like India means thousands of women are dying unnecessarily. Cervical cancer is an important cancer among women in India. It's the number one cancer. And in fact, in the world, every year about 493,000 women develop cervical cancer. And India contributes 25% of this. You know, cervical cancer is caused by human papilloma virus. Cervical cancer is a, is a disease of poor women. And India has a large population. So these risk factors, high level of infection with human papilloma viruses, lack of screening, this is responsible for the high burden of cervical cancer in India. The Alliance for Cervical Cancer Prevention is working to reduce deaths from the disease. It's funding research into alternatives to the more expensive pap smear. The pap smear, that's the standard cervical cancer screening technique. It's a good technique, but it has to be done well. It, require, it, it requires good laboratories, microscopes, technicians, pathologists. So this has been a challenge to introduce uh, cervical cytology or pap smear programs in developing countries in general. But in India, there is nowhere there is any organized cervical cancer screening program. India is now testing low-tech screening methods. Known as VIA and VILI, vinegar or iodine is applied to the cervix. It is then checked directly for pre-cancerous signs. The tests are simple, affordable and can be carried out in rural settings without the need for a laboratory. On the other side of the world, in Costa Rica, a team of scientists is trying out a different approach to preventing cervical cancer, a vaccine. It works by fighting the human papilloma virus, or HPV, which is a sexually transmitted infection. Human papilloma viruses are sexually transmitted viruses that are very common in many populations. There are about 40 types that infect the genital area. Uh, about 15 of them, if they are not, uh, if they don't evolve well, if the infection does not regress as it normally does, it can lead to cervical cancer. The five-year trial is one of several worldwide. A vaccine could be on the market soon. This woman is one of the volunteers taking part. <laughs> I heard about HPV on television and I know women who have had cervical cancer. I'm not ashamed. I hope many women of my age participate in this study because I think if the vaccine works, it would be very good that many women get this injection. I think it's very good she's taking part in the study and is taking the vaccine because I know this is a disease which is very serious. Dr. Jacqueline Sherris is from PATH, a not-for-profit global health organization. 
She's come to see the vaccine trial in Costa Rica. The HPV vaccine is a major development in women's health. While screening and treatment programs are feasible in many low resource settings, it takes years to develop them and it's difficult to reach all women in rural and poor urban areas. The vaccine offers the long term potential with good screening and treatment to bring cervical cancer rates down worldwide to levels that we experience in the developed world. And it's going to be provided to young girls who are 10 to 14 years of age potentially. And this is an issue that's problematic in many countries. India, for instance, is quite conservative related to sexual issues, and young girls really don't know anything about sex and don't talk about sex with their mothers. And so talking with the, uh, with the community and with the women and girls about the vaccine, getting them to understand HPV infection is going to be very important in that setting. There are interesting possibilities now. Countries can think of implementing screening programs with uh, tests like VA and VILI. And of course, vaccination is emerging another interesting possibility. So with all this, there's a good possibility that one may prevent hundreds of thousands of deaths from cervical cancer in India and other developing countries. So the countries should take charge of what they have to do. That is the solution.